Can narcissistic abuse cause autoimmune disorders? In this video, I'm going to answer this question. It's a very good question and explore the ways that narcissistic abuse and other types of abuse can lead to autoimmune disorders. And then in the second half, we're going to look at how you can do something about it and bring back some good health. Hello, beautiful beings. I'm Carol Rathel and I'm an occupational therapist. I help people on their awakening journey. I help people tune into the inner wisdom from upstairs. And I help people lead fulfilling lives. Let's look at what an autoimmune disorder is. An autoimmune disorder or disease is when the body starts to attack its own cells. It sees its own cells as a threat. Some conditions can include hypothyroidism, which is where the thyroid gland in the neck doesn't produce enough thyroxin. Rheumatoid arthritis in the joints. There's Crohn's disease, celiac disease, and also heart conditions. When a person experiences trauma, whether it's in their childhood or as an adult in an abusive relationship, their body releases cortisol every time they become stressed. A build-up of cortisol in the system, or a regular dose of cortisol, leads to inflammation in the body. And the presence of inflammation in the body over a long period of time not only causes pain and discomfort and aching body parts, aching back, aching joints, aching muscles, but it also can cause heart disorders and those autoimmune diseases that I mentioned. I have good reason to know because if you know my story, I was sexually abused as a child, raised by a narcissist, and then had a series of abusive relationships until I came to do my healing journey. When I was 36, after I'd given birth to my son, I developed hypothyroidism and had to go on to synthetic thyroid hormones to keep my metabolism in a healthy rate. When I was in my 40s, I developed fibromyalgia, which is the chronic pain and fatigue that comes from prolonged inflammation. And then in 2016, I suffered acute heart failure and had to go on to a series of medication and a device. Now the good news is I'm no longer in heart failure and I have done quite a lot to reverse this illness in my body once I learned about it and once I knew what to do. Now when a person is being abused by a narcissist, every day is a stress. There's something that you worry about. It's of the nature of the narcissist to find your wounds and press the buttons on those wounds in order to upset you and then they can feed off your upset energy. It's what they do. So every day you're having a flood of cortisol in your body and you're feeling stressed and your mind's trying to figure it out and your brain's firing off. You have every day cortisol in your body. When you've had a prolonged period of stress or trauma and you develop a disorder called post-traumatic stress disorder. The other thing that we know that narcissists do is they target the people who have unhealed wounds from childhood. And I'm guessing if you're watching this video you can relate to this or maybe you know somebody who has been or is in a relationship with a narcissist and maybe it's you and maybe you've just got out of it and you're feeling freaked out because you've just got this constant anxiety. The thing about the narcissist finding people who've been wounded in the past is because they go for people who don't really have the ability to love themselves. In childhood if you've been abused it's very easy and most children feel that they are the defective one. 
children tend to think there's something fundamentally wrong with them because this person's angry with them all the time. That they're not able to see that there's something wrong with the parent or the abuser. They take it on board. So a narcissist has got a radar that picks this up really quickly. So you're not only dealing with the trauma of the narcissistic abuse, but you've also got that childhood trauma to deal with. And when you compound the two together, you can really feel seriously messed up. And there's a term that alternate therapists use called complex post-traumatic stress disorder, which is basically a term that means that you've had this for a very long time and a recent event has compounded it. It can really interfere with your normal perception of reality and you can see danger everywhere. I certainly did. So yes, prolonged trauma, prolonged abuse can definitely lead to autoimmune diseases. It's a definite red flag if you're diagnosed with one to take a look at what's been going on in your life. Maybe you've developed some addictions that help you hide from the truth. It's time to sort of maybe let those aside and get in touch with your feelings and what's going on inside you to find out what the heck is going on. And when you can see that there's a whole basis of trauma and abuse, then you can do something about it. Naturally, the first step would be to leave the relationship where you're being abused. And we can cover that one in another video. So now let's change the subject a little bit and talk about the good news, which is what you can do about this. Number one is to find what those wounds are. Now, if your narcissist has been poking at some wounds, you've got a fairly good idea of what the wound is. So, say for example, they micromanage you and hover over you and criticize you, then perhaps that happened in your childhood and you've got this feeling of being overwhelmed and, and that you can't get anything right and that's why this person's hovering over you, there's a wound that you can look to and identify and you will have a, a belief that goes along with that wound that could be, I can't be trusted to do things on my own. So find what that mistaken belief that you took from childhood into adulthood is and then you can shine the light of truth on it. And you can say, is that really true about me? Can I not be trusted to do things on my own? Is that really true? And of course the answer is no. So when you, when you get that no, you start to undo that false belief. So take a look at those things. Take a look at those beliefs. Take a look at the things that the narcissist does to you to manipulate you and it upset you. And there you will find those wounds. If you've watched any of my other videos, you, you've heard me say you have to feel to heal. So one way you can heal those is to deal with those false beliefs. Another way is to allow those emotions that are going to be trapped in your body and in your energy field, allow them to come through you and be felt. And when you feel them, maybe you cry, Maybe you have to go for a brisk walk to let off some anger. But as you feel those, you are releasing them from your body. And the more you feel and allow yourself to release, the more you're healing. So the two-pronged approach there can help you undo those things of the past. Secondly, Take a very loving approach to yourself, into your body, into your mind, and start a dialogue that is loving towards you. It's very likely that you learnt not to love yourself, as I've already said. So there's a child inside you that needs to be loved. It needs to be reparented in a way that you didn't experience when you were first abused. It might be school bullying, 
that might have triggered this. Either way, there's still this childlike part of your psyche that needs to be loved. So start talking to yourself in a loving way. Praise yourself for getting things right when you do them, even if it's making a cup of coffee. Say, I could say, gee, Carol, you made that coffee really well. You got the right balance of sweetener in it. By the way, I use stevia. No fake chemicals for me. But yes, love yourself. Praise yourself. Be as if you've got that little part of you walking along with you all the time and talk to them like you would a little child. If you've had a child, you know what I mean. The third way that you can address these autoimmune diseases is to do meditation or relaxation techniques. Remember the cause of the disease was stress. So you need the opposite of stress to combat it. Get your body to release the chemicals that are feel good, that are relaxing, that produce several hours worth of calm. And these are the hormones like dopamine, endorphins and oxytocin, which is the love hormone. A really good meditation where you totally relax and you can tune in to a loving space for yourself can release those hormones. I strongly recommend you watch my video about stress in the brain and how meditation helps the brain. There's the link up here. In that video we talk about how meditation brings about a balance within your brain and that can go a long way towards bringing about a state of calm within yourself. Above all, remember that you are a powerful spiritual being focusing your energy on this human body. You have the power of being a creator and we create, as we've said, everything in our life and we can create the solution. So if you choose to believe that you're going to heal your autoimmune disease, you can do this. You can really do this. So I'll leave it there. Thank you for watching. If you like it and haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Please click the like button because it triggers the YouTube algorithm to put this video in front of other people who watch similar subject videos. And if they need to watch this, it'll be put in front of them so they can. And that's how you can help get this message out. We don't have to stay victims of our abuse. So I look forward to seeing you and I will be waiting for you in the next video. Bye for now.